Hi, I'm Tim Moore from the Bartitsa Lab and in this video we're going to be looking at pulling and posting and how important it is to understand and build in, spar with and drill with pulling and posting techniques because they are so natural and so intuitive and if you understand how to do them correctly they can be very very beneficial for you. So let's have a look at some of the terminology and a lot of people have different words and different phrases for this but posting is any act of extending the arm. So typically a post can be against the flesh and blood of the opponent. So in a very simple form, I might post against his head. So I might push off. It's important the difference between a post and a push. The post remains there. It remains a solid structure. So I might post against his chest or against his face, or if we're in kind of a, a lead down grapple, I might push against the top of his head. But either way, I'm providing a mostly full extended arm pressure on the opponent I'm posting. And pulling or dragging is essentially the act of contracting the opponent in. So again, against flesh and blood, could be against the back of his head, and I'm pulling him in with a single kind of collar tie. Yep. It could be that I'm pulling him in with some type of arm drag or two on one, you know, wrist orientated, whatever, I'm, I'm contracting him in. But it's important to understand conceptually why you might do this and what to do with it once you've achieved it because it's so natural in a fight to pull and push but there are some specific examples and benefits to posting and pulling that I just wanted to go on a conceptual level we don't need to break down the techniques that much so why might we post why might we post so a simple example might be we will post because we feel out of control so we may be covering and taking shots and we feel like we cannot sustain this much longer and we are currently unable to crash or grapple or do something about it so we may be just taking a fuck ton of hits and we want to survive that experience so if we're taking the hits and we want to survive that we may just post against the head we might just get the maximum length we can against the opponent's face or against the opponent's head. Importantly, the chin remains ducked, so it's hard to knock you out, and you are stepping into and leaning into that post. There's no point in you staying upright, there's no point in you leaning back and posting really, because it will just crush you down. You need to post forward. So, whilst it's not really a strike, we're taking shots, we're taking hits, and we're thinking, shit, I need to buy myself a second of not being battered. So this is where I might post to the face, or shit being hit, I might just post to the chest to buy me that space I need, because space equals time, time equals choice. This is a very important algorithm to get. If I've got the space, I've got a second, two seconds of not being hit in the head, time, which then gives me the choice to think, do I exit off? Do I follow through? Do I do something else? So why might you post? Number one, you're taking a fuck ton of hits and you just need to buy yourself that little bit of extra time. Yeah, I don't have the ability to scientifically or structurally fire a chin jab or a palm strike I was wanting because I'm being hit. But what I can do is I can broadly post out here, duck in the chin, duck in the head. I'm still looking at his body, I'm still looking at where he is, so I still know where he is, but his ability to knock me out or access my throat is heavily reduced. So you're taking shots, fuck, you post and that buys you the time. Another reason you might want to post is you are doing it offensively. And again, I may decide to do the same thing you just did, but I may decide to post his head up to take his balance a little bit, so I can expose his throat, I can get access to his jaw, he might be a tucked down chin kind of guy. So if I've posted up, I'm not really doing it as a palm strike, although it will hurt a bit, I've posted his head up just for that second to allow me to bang, smash that hook in, or bang, smash that yoke of hand shot right into the throat. Either way, I've posted, bang, to do something I've posted offensively so I've taken his balance somewhat 
momentarily. Another thing you'll notice is when you post high, the body and the groin tend to be forward. So even if I'm not striking, I could do this relatively slow. So, you know, we could be mid tussle. I post high, bam, crack him right into the balls. Boom, you know, liver, spleen, solar plexus, throat, whatever. But that post as opposed to the strike has allowed me to do that. It's given me space, space equals time, time equals choice. So I can post defensively, being battered, fuck. I bought myself a bit of time to do something. Or offensively, let's say we're wrestling around. Boom, I've pushed in that post to expose new targets. Bam, 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 whatever. That's why I might post, to give me the space I need to fulfill. Another example of an offensive post would be, in this instance, I'm grabbing, grabbing the shirt, grabbing the lapel, grabbing anywhere really on the jacket. As long as I've got a, a good grip on the fabric, and again, just a quick primer, if you're grabbing fabric, if you slap the fabric and then grab, you get a much meatier portion of jacket. So, as opposed to me snatching out for the clothing, if I slap to his body and then grab, I get a much bigger lever because I've got more fabric in my hand. Either way. So, in this instance, an offensive post, I'm gonna slap grab, and then I'm gonna drive his shirt up into his face. So it may or may not obscure his vision, depending on the elasticity of the fabric and the size of the fabric. But it will always get some portion over the face. If it gets his eyes as well, brilliant. If not, it'll get his nose and his mouth awkwardly. It'll feel horrible. So from here, slap grab, I'm gonna post his shirt right across his face. And I'm gonna keep some tension to that. So I've posted it. And again, this now allows me the opportunity I talked about before, with the post to the head but with extra surety now because of this this is essentially an enhancer because this fabric is now acting as a lever so the organic post brilliant the assisted post is even better because I've, i can potentially now cover his eyes cover his mouth i could be more invasive of his space but in either instance my post has given me this head back opportunity momentarily Smash, 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 whatever you want to do. That posting functionality works. So, defensive posting, offensive posting, either way, opens up more body, throat, and chin targets for me to do stuff. And it means that his ability to fire back because I've posted is less because he is rocking back. Yes, he could still swing for me, but if you imagine if someone's pushing against your head, your ability to get power into that shot is markedly less. So that's why posting takes away quite a lot of his striking ability. It's quite instinctive to do, it's gross motor, but you gotta understand why you might do it. You are doing it to buy yourself a second of space, following which, you do other stuff, whatever you wanna do. Posting, it really, really matters. You can also remember that he's a three-dimensional human. So if I'm coming from the side, I may wish to post his head from the side to stop him turning. So if we're side by side and I feel he's got to turn the attack, I might post against his head this way. It's hard for someone to turn if their head is facing one way. Where the head turns, the body can go. So if you prevent his head from turning, I might instinctively post and then smash something in. So let's say I'm at a cash machine or a bar, he's sidling up to me. You know, I don't quite have the room or space to do edge of hand blow, sideways hammer fist, anything like that, or elbow. What I can do is just post the face here, and then it will allow me to do whatever I want to do. So you can post against the front of the face or the head, absolutely, with fabric and without, but you can also quite easily do that from the side to a human. And again, you can also do it from the side with fabric, if you wish. You are posting to take him off balance to reduce his ability to strike, and then you can do whatever it is that you want to do. So posting is very, very important. If you're pulling an opponent, if you are using their flesh and blood, so their shoulder, their neck, their ear, their hair, 
or their jacket or their clothing or any other ancillary lever, if you're pulling, typically this is because you wish to flank. So understand that if I'm posting, it's to off balance, buy myself space and time with which to continue in a linear fashion, pretty much. I've posted and I will continue to go through him on a train track style format. Bang, bang, you're moving through. Also, just quickly before I go too much onto pulling, posting against walls, very, very useful. As soon as you use the lever against the wall, you've got essentially a third party helping you. The, the, the pressure and the structure of that wall will again assist you. But it's about the post. If I, if I use a looser arm against the wall, he can contract that arm. As soon as I jam this in, the right body pressure, body weight, forward energy, it's much harder for him to get off that wall. And again, just bear in mind that if you are pinning someone to a wall and striking them, often it makes more sense to go to the body first because a small slip of the head can mean you crack your hand, whether it's your palm or your fist, it'll hurt either way against the wall, whereas the body cannot move that fast. You can really smash them up, smash the groin, do whatever you want to do. Posting against walls with fabric or in the organic medium is very, very useful. When it comes to pulls, we are flanking. So if I'm grabbing his shoulder, I'm pulling, and the reason I'd be pulling in reality would be to get round the back or to the side of the opponent. This could be for a multitude of reasons. So I might be pulling him to achieve a throw. So I may be, you know, putting in a cheeky leg reap, you know, reverse hip toss, whatever. But that requires timing and skill and grappling attribute. A very simple way to be using your pulling is to make sure that you can get around to the back of the opponent so that you can continue to hit him, beat him up, strangle him from behind. It's a much easier place to fulfill it because you are outside of the range and position of his main guns. So whether you decide to pull on the shoulder, you are pulling to flank, to get around the back. Even if I don't go fully around the back, if I get here, I can apply head pressure under the arm. I can then smash in the kidneys. In you know, high threat scenarios, you could be striking the back of the head, back of the neck. You could be buckling the knees. You could be doing all sorts of stuff. But bear in mind that if you're pulling, it's typically to flank. And that may be to throw. Or that may, in a more simple format, be used to position yourself outside of his main arms, his main weapons, so you can deliver strikes from a place of safety, or you can deliver strangles and face bars and eye gouges from a position of safety. So understand, in that rough push-pull melee, whilst it's good to have elasticity of the arms, an important outcome will be if my arm's all the way out, it's to post to allow me to go through, if my arm comes all the way in, it's so I can pull to flank, to move round to the least dangerous bit of the human here, following which you can do all sorts of shit that you want to do. Posting and pulling. Tips on pulling. Again, like posting, if you've got a slap grab, you get more fabric. The more fabric you get, the easier it is to pull and flank. That's very, very, very important. Making sure that as much as you pull an opponent, think elbows, so you don't want your elbows to be flaring out. When you're pulling an opponent, the elbows are tight to your body. Yeah. But another important facet is, as well as the elbows, is you must accelerate you forward and round, as well as accelerating him towards you. So it's not just about pulling him, I'm pushing me. You're stepping, you're being ballistic and entering the space. So as you pull, or as you pull, you yourself are bursting. Imagine you're the Terminator and you're dragging yourself along that vent shaft. That's essentially what you're doing here. Once you've got that traction, that grip, bit of hair, bit of ear, bit of jacket, bit of t-shirt, whatever, or a combination of the two, bit of human flesh, bit of clothing. You are pulling and dragging you <laughs> to flank your way here, to open up soft targets, and to keep yourself safe from his hands. So, 
Posting and understanding why you might be posting, how you could be posting, is important to remind yourself of. And pulling, it's important to understand why you might be pulling an opponent. Dynamically, if you think in terms of things like a hockey fight, you know, or yeah, how a lot of modern street fights go, there'll be a grip and a grip from both parties, and you'll both be smashing each other up. And there is ways in which you can drill. It's important to understand how you might use pulling and posting to off-balance an opponent. So every time he goes to hit me, I post him off, or I pull him in. So another important drill, as well as doing it in isolation, is being able to pull and push an opponent as they try and strike you. So you are always making it really fucking awkward for them to land a decent shot. So do practice those as drills, being able to manipulate a person by pulling, posting and pushing. This is very important. But by the same token, understand that whatever you do here, it's 50-50 because they can do the exact same back. So also it's important drill because it's a natural way to find yourself fighting. And if you're clever with it, you can off balance them as they try and strike you and find angles. So you see here, now I've got to an angle where I've pulled and I've posted and now I can strike. So he might be trying to hit me, I'll pull him, post him in an opposite direction and then strike him. That's an important skill to have, but it does require some strength and some nous on your part to pull off. But if you're thinking I can just post defensively or offensively, if you do that from the off, if you start to think strategically about my posting and my pulling, you can get yourselves into uncontested situations. So as opposed to where we've both achieved a grip and we're pulling, pushing and hitting, if I immediately think, right, aggressive post using the fabric, I can now do other stuff. It puts me in control. It puts me in my right lane. So pulling, pushing, posting, really fundamentally important skills to have. They're very intuitive, but understand why I might decide to post, why I might decide to pull, and why I might decide to pull off center and then post. These are all key skills to have. If you're pulling, it's typically to get around the back. If you're posting, it's typically to exploit in a forward direction. Give that a play, let me know what you think.